So we're going to end this month's lecture discussion off with purpose. It's a hard one. It is what people really grapple over. And I think a lot of people don't understand honestly a lot where it comes to purpose. So I want to dive right into how you knowing your purpose and contemplating purpose and defining purpose for yourself is going to be very, very, very helpful. So just jump right in. Why am I here? I think this is the question that probably everybody either subconsciously or consciously is wondering, what am I doing here? Why am I on this earth? It is very philosophical. It is a very um, hard to answer question in some ways. Because on one hand, like why you're here specifically is probably a little different than why someone else is here. But why am I here? Honestly, as far as purpose is concerned, I think it's very easy. I've said it before, I will say it again. Really, I think we are here to choose life or to choose death. By that, I mean, we're here to choose love and everything that comes with it, or we are here to choose fear. And if we're not actively choosing love, we are passively choosing fear. We live in a society that thrives on fear. Fear is at the root of pretty much everything that our society peddles. Security is a route back to fear. I won't go into it, but it's a route back to fear. Um, competition is a route back to fear. Comparison, route back to fear. Doubt of ability, roots back to fear. Everything roots back to fear. So if we're not actively choosing love, awareness, kindness, understanding, choosing love, we're subconsciously choosing fear. And I think the purpose of every human is to choose one or the other. Choose life or choose death. Choose love or choose fear. Choose to empower, choose to de disempower, right? And so um, the process of doing that, that sounds really lofty. It sounds very like, oh shit, that's easy. The process to live that out is very hard. It is so much harder to live in love than it is to live in fear. Fear has a lot to do with distractions, has a lot to do with escapism, right? I don't know how to approach my life, so I'm going to try to escape it. A, a, escapism happens through a lot of different ways. You know, it happens through not so great things like alcohol, partying, drugs, low vibrational things, escaping in other people. We're very good at that. But there's also other ways, like reading books, watching a lot of TV. They come in the form of distraction. Now, I'm not saying don't read books, and I'm not saying don't watch TV. I am saying be intentional in how you choose to spend your time, because you are not here to waste time. You are not here to do nothing. If you are on this earth, there's something that you need to accomplish. That's why you're here. And at the end of the day, the big thing that you need to accomplish, that everybody needs to accomplish is choosing life or choosing death and acting in accordance. The more personalized mission, if you will, is different for everybody, right? I am choosing life and here's how I'm doing it. For me, that's educating. I know at the end of the day, I am here to educate. I'm not here to impress. I'm not here to inspire. I'm not here to make friends. Like I'm here to educate. I'm here to raise awareness. That's it. And anybody who knows me knows like you can't have a conversation with me where I'm not trying to get to raise your awareness. I literally cannot even help it. I don't mean to. So I kind of, I think, have come up with um, not enough, but just some, some concepts for you to consider. I think there's broad topics of why I'm here, right? So are you here to protect? Everybody's here to serve. We're all here to serve, right? Protect and serve. We're, we're all here to serve. That, that's constantly a thing. That's never not happening. We're serving each other all the time. There is no life in isolation. That's not a thing. It's not possible. That is why solitary confinement is a punishment and a torture system. You cannot possibly live without other people. It's not possible. You are not born into this life without being connected to your mother. That sets the precedent. We constantly need other people. So if you think you're independent, you're not. I'll tell you that right now. 
If you think you can live your purpose and not serve others, you can't. So let's just get clear on that. However, why are you here? In what capacity? What's in you? Is it to serve? Yes, of course. We're all here for that. How do you serve? Maybe you protect and serve. That's possible. I think if you love something, you automatically want to protect it. Mothers and their children, husbands and their wives. So there's some component to all of us, I think, that we're here to protect, but some more than others. You know, some people um, end up being in the soldiers, the military, um, police, firemen. They're here to protect on a bigger level. I was a teacher. I'm here to educate on a bigger level. Like that's what I'm here to do. You know, um, maybe you're here to entertain. We need entertainment. We do. You know, um, you know, maybe you're here to produce music or art or movies. You know, um, maybe you're here to enhance. You know, there's. I would say there's broader categories of what it is that we're here to do. And so really when I was asking like, what, why am I here? What am I doing? You know, um, we're all here to choose life or choose death, but also we're here to figure out what is inherent to us that we can help serve, help others with serving and people who do not take the time to figure this out do default things. Say that again. People who do not take the time to figure out the best way in which they can serve people will do things by default because their parents said so, because they took this track, because this job was available. And that's choosing fear. Doing anything by default is choosing fear. You're too afraid to figure out what you're actually good at, what you're actually here for. So you're choosing fear. If you are actively like, I am here to heal. That's, that's a possibility, right? If you're a doctor, perhaps, um, a nurse, dentist, that's all healing arts, right? You're here, here to heal. Then maybe you have to take the pre-med track and the doctor track. That's fine. You're, you know, you're here to heal. You need this work to, you need these requirements to get it done. Awesome. It's not the process of doing the thing. It's the intentionality behind doing. We are not nearly intentional enough. We operate out of 95% of our subconscious, right? We're not intentional creatures. We don't mean to do that, but we're just not. So asking me these questions is to bring intentionality and awareness to your life. That's the point. That's why we're doing this, right? So why am I here? Choose life or choose death deceptively simple. Choosing life is very hard. Choosing to live in love is very difficult. Choosing to be kind, choosing to be patient, choosing to be understanding is very difficult. It's intentional. You are here to serve. I'll tell you that right now. How you serve is dependent on you, your personal mission, et cetera, et cetera. So ask yourself that question. Why am I here? And, um, don't emotionally think about the answer. Logically think about the answer, right? We're not here to get emotional about it. We're here for a reason. Yes, life is hard. Why are you here specifically? What are your natural talents? Right. <clears throat> I like this question. What kind of tree am I? I'd really like you to ask yourself because we are like we're all books in the library of life we are all trees in the forest or the garden of life and that means the process to choose life or choose death is the same there is a seed that will either get planted or it will not every person whatever seed they are has the capacity to grow into some kind of a tree we'll talk more about it but that's what human capacity is for human capabilities for at the real pinnacle of choosing life. If you're really choosing life, it means you're actively producing other fruit. You're actively producing fruit for people, which automatically means you're planting seeds, right? Because when the tree falls off, it, it, new seeds can be planted. So that's the real choosing life cycle. And so um, 
The problem is, of course, that not everybody as a seed wants to get planted, wants to get broken open, wants to put down new roots and grow up against the elements. So like for myself, and a lot of you have heard me say this before, I know I'm an oak tree. I'm an oak tree. That's it. Like the journey for the oak is solitary. It is tough nut to crack, learn everything the hard way, produce hard fruit, right? Acorns are hard fruit. Um, there, I mean, my last name literally means acorn. So like, it's very clear for me to see what kind of fruit I am. Very easy. Um, and so I know I'm an oak tree. I know that. What kind of tree are you? This, if we could get very clear on this, right? For all things natural, look to nature. There are thousands of different kinds of trees. There are trees that produce fruit, flowers, syrups, nectars, Nuts. I guess a pine cone is technically a nut, right? They're all there to produce something. They all produce oxygen, right? Every tree, every person is here to serve on some level. All trees produce multiple things on multiple levels. They're serving at their max, that their minimum capacity, oxygen. They're doing a lot of other things at the same time. They might be houses for rodents or for birds. It might be something that like trees are nested, they provide shade. Every tree does a lot more than just what it was meant to do, right? Whatever the seed is. People are like that too. So for me, in my process to become an oak tree from tiny acorn Michelina, in the process of becoming that oak, there's a lot of things that I need to do before I get there. However, if I'm choosing life, that means I'm actively choosing to be buried, to be broken, to be putting down a root system and to be ascending into the tree that can produce fruit. That's choosing life, metaphorically. If you're choosing death, it means you're not going any, you're not doing the depth work. You're staying in the shallow. You're staying on the surface, right? And so an acorn will never grow to be an oak unless it gets buried, planted, watered, et cetera, et cetera. We're the same way. We will never grow into what we need to be until we do the hard work, the depth work, the dark work, the scary work. It's why bad things happen to good people. Bad things give us depth, right? So if we're actively choosing to avoid all the bad things all the time, we're not going to break the depth. We're just not. So there are probably plenty of other people who are also meant to be oak trees who've never done the work. And so they get trampled on the surface, they die, they choose death. And so now uh, what you probably should be asking Michalina, like technically doesn't the acorn die to become the oak tree anyway? Yes, it does. A hundred percent it does. You're right, thousand percent you're right, good. It dies to itself to become what it's meant to be, like a phoenix, right? So it's a purposeful kind of death that brings the new life cycle about. An acorn that gets trampled on the surface does nothing. It can produce nothing. It can become nothing. It dies the true death of it no longer exists. Right? So what kind of tree are you? I was asking this in my, uh, one of my group containers. And uh, one of, uh, one of the, the people in there said, maybe I'm a strawberry bush. Mm. And she kind of like got down on herself and said, this is, there's nothing wrong with being a strawberry bush. Like we, but I, I was told her, I was like, you are probably a strawberry bush in that you affect a lot of people. There's a lot of breath that comes from being a strawberry bush. They spread, right? There's a lot of fruit that produces. It's close to the ground. Like don't hate the fact that you're a strawberry bush. It plays to who you are, plays to your strengths, right? So like, are you a tree that produces flowers? Are you a palm tree? Do you produce coconuts? If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just put this on the shelf, put it on the shelf. But if you're tracking right now, you understand what I'm saying. My larger point is this, we're all trees, but we all have different things inside of us that are gonna produce different outcomes. And so if you're 
aware, self-aware in a good way, you will be able to figure out, oh, okay, yeah, I'm a tree that produces this kind of work. Like I would say, if you're here to entertain, you're probably a flower tree of some sort, right? Um, if you are here to protect, maybe you are, I don't even know, a cedar tree, right? If you're here to provide, maybe you're a fruit tree. Um, and so there's a lot of different trees in the garden of life. There's so many different trees and there's like 12 varieties of oak trees alone. So ask yourself, what kind of tree am I? What am I here to produce? What do I do? And when you figure that out, you'll get more comfortable in like knowing who you are and who you're not. I am never going to be a flower tree. I don't produce pretty things that smell nice. I just, I wish I could. My sister's probably a flower tree. She produces beautiful things. She produces such beautiful art that people can enjoy and, and, and look at. I don't. <laughs> I produce, I work with the tough nuts. The people who've had the hard go of it. That's who I tend to work with. And so um, it's knowing about your influence. It's knowing about what kind of tree you are. I'm not going to beat the point. So how will you produce fruit? What can you actually do to produce fruit, right? Once you figure out, okay, I am here to educate. And I tend to work with people who are Pay attention to who gets drawn to you. You're always leading people, right? I tend to work with people who are dealing with this, 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 and this. Um, how am I going to show up? Where am I going to show up? Right, so if you are, take for instance, like, somebody who is a musician. Part of how you produce fruit is by letting people hear your music, right? And so it's by showing up and doing what you're good at and impacting the people in your sphere of influence. Now we're here to serve and we're here to choose life as a bigger purpose. So I don't care where you are. If you're working in a cubicle and you come in contact with people and you're trying your purpose to choose life, you're choosing to be kind and choosing to be understanding to the people around you, no matter what. No matter what you feel, no matter how you're, what you're going through, you don't change how you show up, right? So that's number one level of purpose, choose life or choose death. But level two of purpose is you're within your gift, right? Within your gifts. And so um, that's different for every person. That's different for every person. And so um, how you produce fruit really depends on how well you know yourself, why you're here. And again, you have to figure that out for yourself. Are you here to protect, to educate, to inspire, to entertain, to provide? There's a lot. And like I said, if you wanna work on what that looks like we can talk about it you can dm me um but it is important if you want to choose life if you want to help if you want to be in your gifts in your mission and your purpose then you will ask yourself how will i produce fruit now there's a natural thing to this that humans do anyway. Producing new children is producing new fruit. So to protect and to provide, there are people who are just destined to be parents. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful thing. And so when we were talking about this in the group too, you know, somebody might work on the garbage truck and be totally happy doing that because it provides enough for their family. 
great. As long as they're not bitter and they know that's wonderful, beautiful. You're producing all the fruit. You produce the child. That's new fruit, right? So there's a lot of ways in which we can produce fruit. Parenting is fruit production, literally, right? The fruit of the womb is a child. The seed that's planted is a child. So like we're all as humans capable of producing that kind of fruit. We are all humans, therefore reproduce, we reproduce humans. But on a metaphorical level, the kind of seed that you have inside of you isn't just a biological one. It's also potentially an intellectual one, an emotional one. You know, we're reproducing all the time. We just don't realize it. And so we want to play to our strengths. There are ways we can do this, right? So like if you go back to what you were really enjoying and good at as a kid, if you are really great with your hands and you like to build things and take things apart, the way you produce fruit might be to work on cars and engines. Great. Might be to build houses. Hell yeah, we need that, right? If you are somebody who loves to literally produce food, garden, plant, you're a farmer, wonderful. Love that. If you're somebody who wants to produce awareness, like me, you're probably an educator. You want to teach people. You want them to know what's up. Great. Love that. And so really, it's just a matter of what kind of fruit are you supposed to produce in this life? And when you ask yourself these questions, this is how you get very clear on your authentic self. When you get very clear on your authentic self, then you can get better at authentic leadership because you get very good at delegating. Like for me, math is not my fruit. It's very easy for me to be like, hey, you're way better at math than I am. Not my fruit, not my circus, not my monkeys. Can you do this? Can you help me here? Right? We're interdependent. We need each other. So once we figure out what we're good at, we stop comparing ourselves to everybody else and trying to do all the things that we were never meant to do anyway. A cherry tree doesn't want to be like a lemon tree. It's like, hey, your fruit's awesome. My fruit's awesome. Put them together. We get some really awesome combinations. Love that. Right? And so um, the more clear we get on ourselves, the more comfortable we get with ourselves, the more aware we get of ourselves which is the whole point of this first four video series, get clear on yourself. The better work we can do, the more secure we are. The more we know our intrinsic value that has nothing to do with what we produce and everything to do with playing to our natural strengths and our natural authentic self. So I hope that that, and I'm, I ended it there because I know this is a heavy one. Purpose is a heavy one. Um, so. I'm gonna end it there. If you have questions, reach out to me on Instagram. I hope that this has been an exciting, interesting, informative, helpful way for you to think about who you are. And um, next month we'll be coming in with a new topic and we'll talk more about it then. Bye guys.